In this video, I will show you how Elon's decision to buy Twitter was less about him, but more about the state of business at Twitter. Let me explain to you how. Hello and welcome to season two on the channel. The one where you start building a fundamentally stronger business. I suggest you subscribe or this puppy gets it. On Monday, 25th April 2022, Twitter announced it had reached an agreement to sell the company to Elon Musk for 44 billion US dollars. What this means is Musk will pay $54.20 cash per share and will take the San Francisco based company private. Now, although the deal is charted to go through by 24th of October this year, the truth is a lot can happen between now and then. At the moment, all that has happened is that the board has approved the transaction and agreed to recommend it to the current stockholders, who are the real decision makers of whether the purchase will happen or not. Over the next three to six months, it's totally expected that the bid will be tested not only by the shareholder vote, but also regulatory checks, potential government interference because they love Elon and the risk of competing bids. Where if the Twitter board receive a bid that's even a few cents higher than the offer made by Musk, they would be duty bound to accept it and present that to the shareholders also. So it's totally fair to say that there are a lot of hurdles still to come that Elon has to navigate. The biggest test for this deal though, it seems, is in the court of public opinion. Think about it. It's the richest person acquiring a powerful communication platform. Then there's the fact that this is the largest value company that's going private in the last two decades on the Nasdaq stock exchange. Oh, and we can't forget the recent public interest in what should and shouldn't be treated as free and fair speech. All of this has beautifully combined to create a massive divide in public reaction to the buyout. We have those celebrating the news and those who are outraged that this is happening. Either way, I think both sides are giving Elon more credit than is due. You know how in the Marvel Universe you have the character of the mad titan Thanos who wanted to kill off 50% of the universe's inhabitants with an infinity stone powered snap? His idea was that thinning out of the universe's population would eliminate conflict for resources that would otherwise lead to death and suffering due to excessive demand of growing populations on the different planets in the universe. If you haven't seen it, it's a good watch. Give it a go. Well, I think Elon support supporters and deniers are seeing him as not so different from Thanos. They're thinking that he sat in his home or his office or I don't know, his Tesla and has somehow masterminded this eccentric plan to buy out Twitter and change the world. Whether it's for good or bad, that depends on which side of the fence that you're sitting on. But either way, the sentiment is that he's independently masterminded this whole chain of events. Now, Whilst this all makes for great entertainment and a global media frenzy, I think Elon and his buyout have been miscast as the defining cause, much like Thanos' snap. I am inevitable. In fact, I strongly feel that Elon's decision to make that offer was less a genius plan, but more a reaction to who and what Twitter is as a business today. See, whilst most of us have a familiarity with Twitter, especially courtesy of Trump's blazing performance during his presidential term, Twitter hasn't necessarily been doing as well as we would all assume. In fact, since its incorporation in 2006 and it going public in 2013, Twitter has posted a net loss every year except 2018 and 2019, when it made a profit of just over a billion. Just over a billion, she says, that's a lot of money, I get it. But considering in the scheme of things, it's, it's not that much. After this, however, the business was unfortunately back to its loss-making ways. In 2021, Twitter's annual net loss amounted to 221 million US dollars. Whilst this is a significant decrease from the 1.4 billion loss in 2020, I'm still wondering that Musk's $44 billion buyout is most definitely generous. Twitter's monthly active users hasn't had any major growth since 2015, sticking around the 330 million mark. And considering its head start in the social media world, it has disappointingly only managed to reach 15th in the rank of the most popular social network platforms based on the number of users, falling behind the likes of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and Pinterest. Let's go back to this graph, reporting the number of monthly active Twitter users. 
Now, Twitter have actually stopped reporting this metric since 2019 and switched to reporting on the number of monetizable daily active users instead. But I think much of that is to make it harder for a direct comparison of the platform's performance with other social media platforms. Anyway, when I was looking at the number of monthly active Twitter users chart, I thought it reminded me of something I've seen before, the product lifecycle graph. In case you haven't seen this graph before, it shows the typical life cycle of any product product or even business where the accepted understanding is after introduction to market and growth, the product or business reaches maturity, after which it declines into irrelevance. Now, there's no saying how long a business could stay in each stage. I mean, companies like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Google, Apple, most of them are definitely operating in the mature business phase for many years. Looking at the Twitter's monthly active users chart, it's easy to see that Twitter too is straddling a period of business maturity. Now, when a business finds itself in this space, it has three choices. One, use its energy to stay in the maturity phase and bank on brand loyalty and brand power to retain customers. In this option, you use all your resources to bat away competitors for as long as possible. Coca-Cola is doing it with Pepsi, McDonald's is doing it with Burger King amongst others. Two, the second option is to ride the wave and accept your decline as gracefully as possible when the time is right, much like BlackBerry or Nokia. Three, the third option is to extend the life cycle by reinventing the business. Apple did this with the introduction of the iPhone when the iPod sales were maturing. And Facebook is arguably doing it with their self-reinvention as Meta. How well this plays out, we're yet to see, but it's clear that their reinvention as Meta is designed to bail out Facebook from its otherwise impending decline. Now, I would say by its nature of being a social media platform and a tech company trying to maintain its maturity status for as long as companies such as Coca-Cola and McDonald's would be very difficult for Twitter. Then as a publicly traded company, I doubt shareholders would be stoked if the company just accepted decline. This leaves reinvention of the business as an extension strategy. Now, it's important before we blindly run towards reinvention, we understand all of the issues Twitter is grappling with. Apart from the profitability and stagnating users issues that we've discussed earlier, Twitter has been noticeably weighed down with harassment and abuse issues as a result of mob mentality on the site. Free speech and polarization has been a hotly debated topic and a controversial one on the platform too. The platform is actually not as global as you think, since most of its users are in the US, Japan, or the UK or India, meaning massive populations outside of these regions don't really use the platform. For example, only 4.3 million of Colombia's 50 million population use Twitter. Comparatively, platforms such as TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram have enjoyed much more global success because they've been able to adapt to the several international markets better. A 2015 Pew report explained that as much as Twitter is classified as a social media platform, it in fact has very little social level interaction where only 23% of accounts followed were non-public figures. By way of comparison, 64% of Snapchat users don't follow celebrities, according to a study by Newscred. Another issue is that only 10% of Twitter users are responsible for 92% of the tweets. As it turns out, most Twitter users aren't super active when it comes to actually sharing content. In fact, it seems most users only tweet once per month on average. That means most people are visiting Twitter to consume rather than create. A major reason for this is the learning curve to understand how to use and leverage the platform, which is quite high, making users kind of reluctant to actually create anything. This is definitely all a risky state of play for the business. So as you can see, whilst Twitter is a mature platform, it's weighed down by massive weights that will sink any half-assed attempt to reinvent the business. In fact, I'm going to put my neck on the line and say that actually, as the business is structured today, there is no way a reinvention big enough could have been successfully executed by the team and the business that there is today.
Unlike other tech businesses such as Facebook, Apple, Google, there is no one vision holder with any sort of sizable financial vested interest in the success in the business. In fact, board members of Twitter have such small stakes in the business that it's hard to conceive how they would have any appetite for a risky reinvention strategy. Take the CEO, Parag Agarwal, for instance. Apart from a few research internships at Microsoft and Yahoo, he's only ever worked at Twitter, where he started out as a software engineer in 2011, and then he was promoted to CTO in 2017 and CEO in 2021. So essentially, he's grown his experience in the very company climate that has created the stagnation the business finds itself in today. This limited experience, coupled with his marginal share ownership of 0.063%, make him the unlikely captain of a ship headed for the choppy seas of reinvention. Enter Elon Musk. Now, I don't personally mind the guy, but I understand why some people are upset by his impending acquisition. This video isn't gonna get into all of that, but let's look at what a person with his experience and track record can do for a business like Twitter. Well, I think this one tweet says it all. On March 25th, 2022, Elon set up a poll of his 82 million Twitter followers and discovered that 70% of the respondents believed that Twitter does not uphold the principles of free speech. Now, whether you believe the same or not, you cannot deny that in that one tweet, Elon engaged the imagination of so many. By going for the jugular, Elon showed what Twitter was missing most vision. The sale of Twitter is less about Elon Musk and his ambitions and more about what Twitter is, an average performing social media platform that is stuck about what it should do next. Elon Musk just happens to be the guy that thinks he's the man for the job. Fair play. I suggest you watch this video next to understand the product lifecycle graph in better detail. It will help you assess where your business sits and hopefully trigger you into action so Elon Thanos Musk doesn't come for your business next. Actually saying that, I reckon some of you would love that. Yeah, yeah, you definitely would. <laughs> See you in the next one.